check it out. I just got another kind of entry level airbrush. I was about to open it and use it, but I thought, why not share it with you guys? So I'll go ahead and do an unboxing on camera. We'll see what it looks like. We'll see how it works. We'll see how it compares to my Iwata, which is probably not a fair comparison, but I want to get an idea if it's worth what they're asking for it. And if I can recommend it to all you guys who have been talking about getting one and asking me questions on which one is best to get to start with. Let's just get right to it. All right. So far, just black foam. There it is. So I guess I get the red model. Oh, I didn't realize this came with so many things. All right. Well, cool. Let's just go straight to the gun. And pretty stylized, I have to say. I got to think this is a 7 milliliter cup reservoir cup with a lid it's the cup is aluminum and unscrews it's kind of nice very light that's kind of nice it does have an o-ring that's kind of necessary and this is a double action gun so that means you push down for air pull back for paint and the throw is about the same it's a little more than my other gun the iwata has a slightly less of a throw yeah this thing goes down maybe another 16th or 30 seconds of an inch that's interesting. You'll notice there's one additional uh, valve here or adjustment screw right here that this gun doesn't have. And I don't think any of my other guns have this. This is an airflow valve and you can close it all the way down or open it up to allow either full flow or partial flow. So typically how I deal with controlling my airflow is by having an airflow valve right on my hose. So I can tweak it right here if I need to, which is pretty rare. Now the back of the handle has the uh, guard for the needle tail and this unscrews and looks to be the same kind of aluminum anodized red very 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 light that makes a big difference believe it or not as you use your gun the heavier it is the more fatigued your hand gets especially if you're doing a lot of painting so the lighter the gun is and the lighter the sort of spring retention here on the trigger the easier it is on the user again I, i'm seeing another machined aluminum part right here which is the housing for the needle guide and the spring loaded mechanism for the trigger now i can loosen up the needle retaining nut here and pull the needle out and it feels pretty polished a lot of these needles come and they don't feel very polished this feels very nicely polished we'll put that back in there and make sure we don't hurt it and one other little feature that i don't have on this one is a feature that as a beginner i really liked having and this is a needle limiter so basically as you screw it in the farther you screw it in, the more it limits the needle from coming back. So you can put it in far enough that actually the needle won't come back at all. And then you can ease it back and just get a little tiny bit of paint to come out. That's really nice when you're not too sure of yourself and you're trying to get a very defined spot or a little area and you don't want to overspray it with too much paint too quickly. It's a nice feature. It helps you build your uh, technique and it helps you build your confidence. These days, I hardly ever use it. I'm liking it. It looks pretty well made. I don't see anything obviously distorted or poorly machined or anything. There is a little bit of a weirdness here. If you look straight down the barrel here, I don't know if it's noticeable, but the reservoir and this little valve stem aren't really aligned at a, in a straight line. There's a little bit of an angle between them, but I doubt very much that has anything to do with performance. The needle tip guard is kind of interesting looking and I'm not sure. Oh, so this actually, this little guard here actually just pulls off, which is really very different. And I'm gonna put it back on before I show you the other one because it does expose the tip of the needle, but it's very di different from a, almost every other one that I've had, which basically unscrew. That reveals the needle tip right there. A lot of artists will paint without having this diffuser or needle guard on there and there is a difference in the way the air flows around the needle but those techniques are really kind of advanced techniques and mostly used for people who are actually doing very fine line work usually in art typically for lure painting the only time i need that kind of control and ability to get really close to the, to the subject is when i'm doing a very small detail like a dot or i want to get to the very close to the edge of a little stencil but it's nice to know that you can pop this off do what you want to do and just pop it back on it actually comes with a couple of really big reservoirs, plastic ones. And there's another reservoir inside here, another aluminum one. It's chrome plated, but it's very light. And another lid. I rarely use them because I'm always in a hurry and 
don't have the patience to put it on and take it off. But it really helps to have these when you're painting, especially on a steep angle downwards, so you don't spill your paint out the top of this thing. But these large reservoirs screw right on. They have an O-ring of their own. And if you're putting down a lot of paint, for instance, if you're just gonna be priming something, especially anything large, or just a big batch of lures you're doing, having a big reservoir like this really helps. And it also has covers for these guys, and you get this medium-sized one. And look at this. Oh, that's pretty nice. I gotta say, I like this. I've got an assortment of all the O-rings from the gun. That is super handy, because typically I'll end up ordering an O-ring, it'll be the wrong one, I'll pay eight bucks for the wrong O-ring, and then take me forever to get the right one. So, pretty happy with these. This is about 25 milliliters, and this one is um, looks to be about 45 milliliters, maybe 35 milliliters, or a little less than an ounce and a little more than an ounce. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put the chrome reservoir on just because I think it'll be a little easier to clean. I may be wrong, but I think the smoothness of the chrome is gonna be a little easier to get paint off of. And it feels really nice and velvety smooth on the inside too. Very nice. Now the needle it comes with is a 0.3 millimeter, and that's a really nice mid-range needle. And that's what I use on almost all my guns, almost all the time. I usually use a 0.3 for my general painting and then a 0.5 when I wanna put down a lot of paint like primer, sealer, mid coat, that kind of thing. Or if I have a paint that really needs a big tip, like paint with metallic flakes in it or like a liquid chrome or something. So the gun does come with a 0.2 and a 0.5 needle in its own little case, and they're associated nozzles. Now the nozzles are pretty unique. It's actually a full casting, and the tip, I guess, is machined in. And I had to look at it with a magnifying glass because I thought for a minute there that the very tip nozzle was removable. And that's how it is on most of them, but it's not removable. This whole assembly is the tip nozzle. So that's the tip cone. And we can just unscrew that. And again, it has an O-ring. And then here's the tip itself wedged in here. And it just sits right in the middle of here and it self-centers. And it just seats down in there into what looks to be a silicone little washer or a little seal. I'll show you what the Iwata looks like. That tip is brass and just sits in there and probably needs a good cleaning. But you can see the very tip of it. That is the actual nozzle. And that comes off from the base. So this one's uh, actually kind of different. It's two parts. When you clean this though, taking this little nozzle off and then putting it back on, it does have a tiny little O-ring, believe it or not. But taking it off and putting it back on is a little bit of an ordeal in that you can lose it really easily or damage it really easily. We have one more part to disassemble before we actually can go and paint. Just want to see what this looks like. This is the assembly that houses the spring for the trigger that just is threaded into the body. So this is very similar to most guns. There's a trigger shaft and this takes the input from the trigger and pushes backwards against the spring, against the spring that's inside this housing, which again is aluminum and very light, very nice. And this actually has a separate spring tension adjustment, which is kind of different. Typically you don't see that. I don't think any of my other guns have that. That'll be nice to play with because I know that after a while, believe it or not, that tension starts to really wear my finger out. So I'll play with that for sure. All right, we'll reassemble this. They should have knurled this a little bit because right here is where you have to grip. That should have some knurling. Put the needle back in. That feels pretty nice with uh, just partial tension. It's just a matter of being sure you have enough spring tension to seal the needle at the tip. If you look down there, I'm not sure you'll be able to see all the way in there. You can see how narrow the th very bottom, the throat of the uh, paint reservoir is. And I'll use a flashlight so you, maybe you can see the bottom of the Iwata gun is nice and broad and makes it easy to clean. So we'll see how easy it is to clean that deep well in there. It might mean that you have to take the reservoir off to really get a good deep clean. All right, let's put it all back together, take it into the paint booth, let's just give it a shot. Now, I don't use my airbrushes for fine art. I'm not an artist, I'm actually a professional engineer, a lure designer and lure maker, and I make these videos to share some of the things I've learned and come up with in lure design, lure making, and in lure painting. So if you're interested in seeing some of the paint work that I've done on lures, I'll go ahead and link a playlist somewhere above me. So one other feature I almost missed is that it comes with a quick connect that uh, is a female and a male, which is nice. I've already got the female part on my hose. So I'm just gonna put the uh, male part on the gun. I'll get down and there you go. So I've got my air system set at 25 PSI. I've got the air open on the valves, the Iwata. It's a little louder. 
there's a there's more airflow through that Iwata for sure. So I'm going to use some black paint and this is a tester's Aztec black. And the nice thing about it is that it paints really well right out of the bottle. So I turn off the mic at the camera because I've got the extractor going. And here I'm trying to make small dots. Being able to make small really defined dots is both part the quality of the gun and your ability to use it. So it takes a little while to actually get a feel for it. And here I start to get a little better tiny defined dot, visibly much better than the first ones I made. Making a good clean line means a nice smooth stroke. And here I made a decent line. It's not perfect. It could be a little less fuzzy. With the tip cover off, it's a little easier to make nice sharp dots. And the line quality improves a little bit too. You can see it on this last line just as I run out of paint. Let's switch to the Iwata. I want to see how atomized the paint is compared to the Neo Echo. In other words, how small and tight the little dots are of paint. So I put down a little cloud of paint spraying from the same distance. On the side by side comparison, you can see that the Iwata puts down a finer mist. The dots are just a little smaller compared to the much less expensive Neo Echo. Now I'm just free painting and seeing what the gun can do from different distances, drawing straight lines and curved lines, and just seeing how nice and even they are, whether there's any breaks in the lines or any strange feel in the control. But I find that it actually sprays really nicely. It feels good in the hand and the trigger is pretty natural to work with. Here I'm varying the distance and the speed just to play with the line quality. And it does a pretty good job. I can draw a pretty steady line without having any breaks in it, even while I'm curly cueing around. Switching back to the Iwata, you can see that the line quality is better. It is a little easier to put a very nice, smooth, and tight line on the paper. But the price point of this gun is quadruple that of the Neo Echo. But for just starting out, the Neo Echo is more than good enough. So you have to decide whether you want to pay $170 for this or $40 for this and all the extras it comes with. After practicing with the gun for a little while, you can get a pretty good result, both with putting down these little dots and making a nice, even, and consistent line. So I think for the money, you get quite a deal with this considering all the needles and the extra tips, the extra reservoirs, and a gun that actually works pretty good. I have to say, if it continues to operate this way over the next year or two, it'll be 39 bucks pretty well spent. So I think this is gonna be a pretty nice addition to my airbrush quiver. I'll definitely keep it online all the time. It'll probably be my secondary color kind of gun. I might switch out to the five millimeter for this and use this more for background colors, mid coats, primers, that kind of thing. I'm not being paid to test this. I just wanted to share the unboxing. I needed another inexpensive airbrush to have handy in the paint booth. So this is typically our semi off week. So next week's video will be a full lure build and hopefully a little bit of time on the water. And let me know in the comments if you wanna see more product review videos or less. All right, I'll see you on the next video.